Hello and welcome to Ansar Kari. I welcome you all to this uh, session of Anthropology Decoded where we are going from A to Z. When What I mean by A to Z is that we are going on with discussion of anthropology, then the syllabus and now we are on to the previous year questions. Okay, so what we had uh, discussed till unit 6 which was anthropological theory and now we are going ahead with the remaining topics so if you've gone through uh, the videos on syllabus you would know that this particular unit which is culture language and communication it is one of the easier topics in uh, paper one and also this is the topic which is related to multiple uh, areas within the earlier topics that you have done why i say that is let's say for example the unit on culture the unit on society, the ling uh, the uh, unit on uh, branches of anthropology, which is you know linguistic or sociocultural, okay. And there are there is a generic tone as well to the topic also. Let's say for example uh, that point on verbal and non-verbal non communication, okay. So we'll not discuss the syllabus. We've done that. We'll go through the question. Look at this. In 2019, it said the relationship between linguistic and sociocultural anthropology. So you have studied what is linguistics you have studied what is sociocultural anthropology you have studied culture also and you studied society separately also and now you have studied about the characteristics of language also right with context to culture and communication so this is a multi-dimensional kind of a topic that they've asked in 2018 the question was that uh, to critically examine structure and content of language influenced by culture so what is the influence of language and culture? That means both, vice versa, culture on language. And you can also understand language on culture. right? You can easily understand uh, we have such a complex uh, kind of uh, structure of language in modern societies or in you know Western societies. There is, there is a vast amount of complexity. There are slangs. Uh, there is a mix of different languages. But you wouldn't see this kind of a structure in a simpler society in a tribal society okay so why is that why what is the influence of that culture on the structure and content of language you can easily you can even comprehend that while reading the question the next is totally a direct question on non-verbal communication right again state the theory regarding the origin of spoken languages in human society both from biological and cultural point of view so you have to keep in mind the biological aspect, the cultural aspect and the theories, right? So separately you will be studying theories also. You will be coming across different aspects of theories in separate units also, right? So do you understand what kind of overlap that we you can see in this topic? Even the questions, the syllabus, everything. Okay, the next topic which we studied if you remember, if you go back to that part where we talked about the research methodology, it is one of the cornerstones of anthropology because uh, the difference between anthropology and major different subjects is on the research methodology also, right? So in 2019, you can see the question was discuss the phenomenology as a research method in anthropological studies. So you will be studying about these... Uh, research methods in detail and you should know that as well yourself because the subject the core area of subject is on research methods different research methods that are employed right so you have to discuss uh, phen uh, phenomenology the next is the question in 2019 itself it said evaluate the participant observation in producing anthropology a very very common uh, you know topic in uh, research methodology is the participant observation you will come across this topic in the theories topic you know in the theories aspect uh, chapter also and in different uh, ch chapters also let's say for example in marriage or in uh, family system <clears throat> where does all that information come from that comes from the participant observation technique that has been employed okay so this topic is very very straightforward okay and you can use examples also while uh, writing this answer, you can use examples from the previous units as well. How is the case study method helpful in understanding a social phenomena? So what is the case study method? Again, you know, this is 
completely straightforward here. It writes what is case study and it says question is that how what is its use and uh, explain in suitable examples. So you have to give an example that where can you employ the case study methodology? Where would it best be suited for? Right. Again in 2018, define ethnography and a brief history of the ethnographic studies that were conducted. Right. So you, uh, I, uh, I have questions till 2014, but you can fairly understand that direct question and uh, based on purely understanding of the research methodology. Next is the technical unit on human genetics. Okay. We studied about this, you know, the, the genetic principles, man family study, pedigree analysis and all those things, biochemical methods. So look at the question. Describe briefly the various methods used in genetic study. So whatever you studied, all of these are the methods that are used to study genetic uh, genetics of man and you have to describe the, the briefly describe them. Okay. Twin, uh, twin method, so twin study is here. There is, this is a direct question. Genetics of HLA and organ transplantation, right? Uh, anthropological uh, relevance of population genetics. Why, what is the relevance of conducting those population genetics, right? I wouldn't go into the detail of it because then it will be more like uh, a session on the topic rather than the questions. Pedigree analysis, right? Direct question genome study right let's move on to the next unit mendelian genetics so we've discussed about what mendelian genetics is and how common this is why because you studied this in science also right uh, single factor multi-factor lethal sub lethal genes all of these so what are lethal and sub lethal genes very very simple and direct question you have to explain that okay the monogenetic and polygenetic inheritance what is that Okay, and we have to give examples also. Contribution of Mendel in field of genetics. How uh, Mendel came up with that theory of inheritance. How, what importance did it have in the synthetic theory of evolution as well. So are you looking at the kind of uh, scope that this question has or this unit as a whole has. Next is on, uh, it, it says to discuss suitable example of how Mendel's law of inheritance are applicable to man. Okay. You see 1992 also direct question, 1990 direct questions. There are all direct questions. This is also direct question, direct questions, repetitive questions. Okay. Next is on Mendelian genetics. Okay. So we have done this. 9.3 concept of uh, genetic polymorphism and selection okay hardy winberg law causes the changes mutation isolation you have gone through all these terms in detail genetic drift in breeding in your previous unit on uh, evolution you know let's say unit 1.5 1.4 all those units have these details uh, has these terms in detail like we've talked about consanguous non consanguous mating we have done this in uh, chapters on family right look at this, look at the question differentiate between transient and balanced geni uh, genetic polymorphism and illustrate with the example right hardy winberg law in 2017 direct question mendelian principles and application another direct question this can be taken for this also this can be taken for the previous unit also what is genetic polymorphism uh, detail of its type with suitable example immunogenetics you, you know many of these terms uh, you will find these terms in newspapers also in current affairs also factors affecting gene frequency among human population so you use all of these terms mutation isolation selection inbreeding genetic drift all of these factors are affect the gene frequencies you would have understood fairly by now if you have done your syllabus and uh, you know what effects gene frequency, genetic load, what is genetic load? So this is a question that can be asked even from unit 1.4. How is it measured and what are the important factors? Genetic polymorphism, again Hardy-Winberg law. Genetic polymorphism, are you looking at it? Are you, are you, uh, you know, can you even see that uh, there is so much repetition in the question? Why? Because this is a very static topic. The terms in the topic are static, 
the current affairs are not static so you have so much of value addition to be done next is on chromosomes and aberrations okay so we've discussed about all of these uh, you know chromal aberrations uh, down syndrome turner syndrome or uh, all of these uh, batao syndrome all of these genetic diseases or you can say genetic imbalances that have been caused this t- topic is on chromosomal aberrations look at the question 2018 it says describe the mechanism for structural anomalies of autosomes with diagram so i said that you need to draw diagram somewhere it will say with diagram somewhere it will not say with diagram but you have to make sure wherever you can you have to draw these diagram categorize genes that influence human survival explain so there are multiple aspects to this you know explain the significance of screening and counseling for genetic disorders why is it important for to be uh, to, to do screening and counseling for the, these genetic disorders down syndrome direct question chromosomal aberrations what are the chromosomal aberrations the chromosomal aberrations they, they must they can be numerical okay so all of these things genetic counseling again a direct question 2014 again 2012 there is genetic counseling okay let's move on on race and racism the next topic morphological variations racial criteria trait uh, biological basis of this classification all of these things this is also a very common topic why because in the anthropometric data or the census data uh, you know you come across these terms uh, races with reference to somatotrophic and uh, morphometric characteristics commonly used for racial classification make cru- uh, critical comments as to whether race is a valid concept or not so this this whole argument whether wa- race is a valid concept or not this is one of the key aspects of anthropology because anthropology what it did was it abolished that uh, superior race inferior race concept right so this whole concept has so much to add in it race is a myth justifies the present day relevance again another different way to say this the role of hereditary and environment uh, environment information of races purely direct question very very direct question the biological basis role of environment okay race and racism what are the three major races oh, so so much so direct question so easy and so direct importance of biological criteria right is race a valid concept see again it is asking the same question differently assess the relevance of racial classification in indian context so this can be even used for paper 2 i think this was a maybe a question paper 2 only but nevertheless you understand this right next question is on the next unit is age sex and population variation so these terms abo blood group rh hla uh, blood enzymes blood fat pulse rate and all this see direct question 2016 rh blood group you have so much to add from your science even if you have a science background you have uh, so much of uh, information to add genetic markers and their usefulness blood groups genetic markers again why are they good genetic markers we have to give examples another question on abo blood group this was rh this is abo blood group and it revise it uh, how does it help in resolve cases of disputed paternity you must have come across certain news items also with this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, this kind of analysis that were recently done there was a dna analysis for a uh, baby uh, for its paternity you know for its uh, motherhood also next question is on uh, competitive account of so this is 2012 hemoglobin hemoglobin levels respiration levels okay respiratory functions right again ecological anthropology so we have studied different kind of anthropology now we have ecological anthropology so the biological adaptations this is a very interesting topic also because you will find these if you uh, you know you done some kind of traveling and you have interacted with different kind of people from different regions or even you have looked at pictures let's say of eskimos or people living in higher altitudes or people who live in deserts what kind of 
physical adaptations that you can see in them there are some very minor adaptations right human adaptations are always bio cultural in nature discuss the relevance okay reference to the uh, human adaptation in high altitude climate difference between uh, adaptation adaptability and acclimatization with example response to acclimatization to high altitude stress very direct question very very direct question okay you can see all of these ecological anthropology directly after 2014 again high altitude stress 2014 acclimatization in cold cold climate 2015 right ha huh. so i hope that there have been uh so much of thoughts you know coming into your mind even if uh, you go through the newspaper you will be having so much of material so much of data so much of so many points coming into your mind while going through these questions that is why it is very important to first see the syllabus and questions before jumping on to what do i read for uh, the subject or should i take it or not the only way you can understand it is by looking at the Uh, it in a in a whole. So I hope that uh, whatever we are doing and uh, what whatever we have done till now, you are finding it of much relevance. If you have any kind of suggestion, please 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 make sure that you add those comments so that we can uh, add new uh, perspectives to our whole discussion. And uh, if you want us to cover any other optional also, let us know in the comments. Uh, do like to uh, do remember to like and subscribe share this video and uh, we'll meet you in the next session that we have thank you so much for your time